evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to WRKC's Variety Show with your host, Isla Cromer. Our special guest this evening is Abbott and Costello. Tonight's program will feature a story from X-1. And is brought to us by our good friends at... Chocolate bears, chocolate bears, you can eat them anywhere. Eat them here, eat them there. Chocolate bears, chocolate bears. <laughs> But now it's time for news, weather, and sports, along with a word from our sponsor. Today the USS Nautilus was put to sea. This is the first ever nuclear-powered submarine in history. The submarine was authorized for construction in 1951 by the United States Congress. In further news, President Eisenhower has sent troops to Washington, D.C. to protect Martin Luther King Jr. and his followers during the March for Freedom event. Dr. King will be speaking tonight from the Capitol, and it will be brought to you live on WRJC later this evening. Tune in and don't miss this historic speech. Now to weather. The weather today in Indiana has seen five inches of rain and is still coming. Stay safe and high above ground. If you live in a small or wooden house and experience leaking, go to a shelter or a neighbor that does not experience leaking. Stay tuned for WRKC weather updates. I'm Harper Durkowski for WRKC weather. And now for sports. This is Addison coming to you live from Shanghai, China with the World Championship Ping Pong Tournament. Some controversies in the match today as the refs made a questionable call. However, in the end, Chinese player Ma def- defeated by the defending world championship Caleb, who is who in a brilliant move beat Ma at the end net for the win. Good evening, WRKC listeners. The golden age of Hollywood is coming to small town Indiana in the home of the Wallowitz family, who recently purchased the town's first television set. Their favorite show is I Love Lucy, and the family says this is the funniest show around. We will stay tuned to find out what other shows they enjoy watching. Now back to the program. Made from 100% milk, our chocolate bears are creamy and delicious. They're $1 per pound, and if you act now, you can get a five-pound bag for $2 at your local grocery store. Remember... Chocolate bears, chocolate bears, you can eat them anywhere. Eat them here, eat them there. Chocolate bears, chocolate bears. Thank you to our sponsor for the news, weather, and sports. Let's check in and see what's happening at X-1. From the far horizons of the unknown come transubscribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future. Adventures in which you live in a million, could be years, on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with the Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, presents... <laughs> Countdown for Blast Off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one. Fire. From the far horizons of the unknown come transubscribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future. Adventures in which you live in a million, could be years, on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with the Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, presents... X-1. Tonight, a story by Frederick Pohl, Tunnel Under the World. Mary, 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 where are you? Guy, what's wrong? You're trembling. Where were you? In the kitchen cooking breakfast. What is it? I don't know. A dream, I guess. An explosion. Did you say an explosion? Yes. But I had a dream. What? I dreamed there was a big explosion and and then something sort of hit me in the head. Holy smokes. Maybe there really was 
some sort of an explosion, and it started us dreaming. <laughs> well, there's, there'll be an explosion down at your office if you don't hurry up and get to work. Coming on the bus, Burkhart watched to see if there was any evidence of an explosion. There wasn't. If anything, the town looked better than ever. The only thing that seemed strange to him was the fact that none of the usual crowd was on the bus. He was real. He was a little relieved when he saw his old pal Henry Swanson finally got on. Excuse me. Oh, Henry. Pardon me, sir. <laughs> Henry, what's the matter with you? It's me, Guy Burkhart. Burkhart. Sorry, I don't believe we've met. What, Henry? For Pete's sake, it's me. If you'll excuse me, this is my stop. Well, I'll be. How do you like that? Guy Burkhart got off in front of the, the gigantic Contro Chemical Building, took the elevator to the 99th floor. Where he worked on the accounting department for 12 years. It wasn't until he was almost at his floor that he realized the speaker was not playing the usual commercials. Friends, are you happy with your present home freezer? Of course not. Well, the answer to your problems, problems is a feckle freezer. Feckle freezers are better than freezers. Most wives would do anything for a feckle freezer. He walked down to the marble court quarter to his office. Morning, Miss Orn. Good morning, Mr. Burkhart. At exactly midnight, Guy Burkhart last lapsed into a sudden deep sleep. There was something wrong, something definitely peculiar about what was happening. And the following morning, he woke up screaming. <laughs> Darling, what is it? What's wrong? I, oh, nothing. Bad dream, I guess. You gave me such a shock. <sighs> you seem to be having a lot of nightmares lately. Really? Yes, the one I had yesterday. This was the same. A big explosion and then nothing. You had a dream yesterday? Well, of course I did. You had the same sort of dream. I, <laughs> Guy, you're mistaken. I, I don't remember your dreaming. Oh, no, Mary, you told me. Guy, you're mistaken. But Mary, maybe you dreamed I had a dream, maybe. Well, yes, I might have done that, I suppose. Everything did seem sort of strange yesterday. That's probably it. You better get dressed, dear. Today's the 15th. That's when the... 15th? Yes. Well, then it must have been a dream because yesterday was the 15th. Guy Burkhart got up, dressed, ate breakfast, and took the usual bus to work. <laughs> Once again... Everything seemed brighter and newer than usual. And once again, he was puzzled when he noticed none of the old crowd on the bus. Pardon me, sir. Well, look, don't shove, so I... Oh, morning, Henry. Morning. For God's sake. Well, what is it? You've been falling or something? I'm sure you remember. Remember what? I can't not... I can't talk. Uh, this is my stop. Will you, will you excuse me? Well, Henry. Henry. For Pete's sake. In yesterday's dream, Guy Burkhart got off at his stop and took the elevator to the 98th floor. The speaker in the elevator heard a new commercial this time. Sirts Breathments. They're minty. Is your present breath? Freshener make your throat feel raspy and unpleasant? Certs contain a miraculous new flavor that actually gives you the sensation of fresh, chilled breath. Certs breath mints. Certs breath mints. He walked down to the marble court quarter to his office. Morning, Miss Orn. Good morning, Mr. Burkhart. Oh, you like my new hairdo? Uh, yes, it's, uh, is Mr. Barton in? Uh, no, sir, he had an appointment, appointment with, with Mr. Dorchin at the, Dorchin at the Research, Research Institute. Institute. I know. You know? Well, I guessed it. Anyway, today's the 15th of June, and he won't be here to sign the quarterly statement, and I'm going nuts. 
Let me have a breath mint, will you? Uh, yes, sir. Try one of these. They're certs. I never heard of certs before today. Where are we? A bunch of guinea pigs? Dorches do advertising accounts. Some something wrong, Mr. Burkhart? Wrong? Oh, ho, oh, please. Perish the thought, Miss Orange. Perish the thought. He went to his desk and stood at the mail. Before he opened it, he knew the factory distributor's envelope contained an order of 12 new electronic computers. He knew that the development journal contained an article about a new method of transprinting selected brain circuits of human engineers into the electric brain circuits of robot engineers to facilitate the operation of automatic factories. He knew there was a complaint from Fine Beck and Sons about the Contro Chemicals, newest household robot circuit. After a long while, he forced himself to open them. They were exactly as he suspected. Hello? This is Swanson, Henry Swanson. What is it? Do you remember? Remember what? Just remember. All right, now. Listen, Henry, let's stop playing games. Yesterday, either I was dreaming or you snubbed me on the bus. Today, the same thing happens. Oh, you do remember. Thank heavens. I thought so when I saw you, but I couldn't be sure. Now, what is it you want? Listen, tomorrow morning when I get off the bus, you get off with me. Be casual. They may be watching. Who may be watching? Swatson. Hello? You buzz, Mr. Burkhart. Yes, I'm still out of breath mints. Would you buy me a pack of Clorettes? Wouldn't you rather have certs? There was something wrong. Something definitely peculiar about what was happening. The call from Henry Swanson, the strange behavior of his secu security, Miss Secretary Miss Horn, these new products, the dream. Guy Burkhart went home that night feeling like a man in a nightmare. That you, dear? It's me. Did you have a good day? Fair. Oh, before you sit down, will you go down in the cellar and put in a new fuse? The switch in the hall closet blew out. Supper will be ready in a minute, so don't start fooling around with that old boat hall you've been building. I won't. Mary! Mary! What is it? Come down here. Hurry up. What is it? I don't know. I'm not sure. I was looking for a fuse and I thought maybe I'd drop one under the boat hole, so I scratched none. Look, let me put a flashlight on it. Well? Look at the floor. Well, what about the floor? It's supposed to be cement. Well? Well, it's copper, and there's a thin layer of cement, but underneath, it's metal. Look here. <laughs> underneath the concrete, more metal. In here, on the wall. You see? Metal. Metal on the floor, behind the walls, every place. Well, I I don't really understand. Mary, I know this sounds crazy, but for some but somebody for some reason I can't even begin to guess has taken this house and replaced it with a clever imitation. Guy Honey, I'm gonna look around a little more. Well, then I will be ready. Alright, save it for me. There are a couple of things I got to figure out. The following morning, Guy Burkhart woke up screaming. He dragged himself into the kitchen where his my wife, Mary, was preparing breakfast and discovered it was still June 15th. <coughs> Mary, where's the morning paper? Where is it? Outside the door, I guess. Uh -huh. June 15th. What? You better hurry, dear. Today's a today's a day. Mr. Barth Barth fills out the quarterly tax return. Oh no, it isn't. What? <coughs> he won't be there. He'll be he'll be at a meeting with Crackpot Dorchin at the Human Research Institute. Mr. Dorchin? He'll be there, and Miss Horn will have a new hairdo, and the elevator will be selling some new products. And Swanson. What about Swanson? Swanson. I wonder if he's going to be the same today, or whether... Guy, what in the world are you talking about? Huh? Quick, quick. Nothing. Never mind. Where's my coat? You, you, you haven't had any breakfast yet. I don't want to miss my bus. I'll see you tonight. Guy Burkhart got up onto, on his bus. There were the same 
unfamiliar faces, the same unusual looking buildings, the same unusual bright sunshine in the customary corner, Henry Swanson, pale and furtive, climbed aboard. Excuse, uh, excuse me, sir. It's quite all right. Do you, do you remember the Cunfall? Yes. Okay. Oh, thank heavens. Get off at the next corner and follow me. Where are you <coughs> going? There's an excavation for a building about a block down. Make sure you aren't followed. I'll go first. Burkhart, here, behind this fence. All right now, Henry. What's this all about? Just, just a minute. I don't want, I don't, I want to make sure we weren't followed. Followed by whom? By them, of course. And who <coughs> just are they? I'm not sure. At first I thought perhaps they were Russians. Now I'm beginning to think they are Martians. No humans could have accomplished what they've accomplished. Now wait a minute. Start from the beginning, Henry. What's going on? Look, Burkhart, particular things have been happening to you, right? Yes. A lot of your friends are missing. Your house seems changed. Yeah, there's some str something stranger than that. A date. Today is June 15th. Yeah, I could swear. I could swear. Yesterday was the June 15th, and the day before that. You got it, my friend. It's always June 15th, and you and I are the only ones who know it. But why, Henry? How? I'm not sure. I think it's some sort of mass hypnosis or something. Well, why doesn't it work for us? My wife doesn't remember a thing. Somehow, when it happened, they missed us. We were protected from a full force of rays or whatever they used. Burkhart, we... Where were you on the night of the 14th about midnight? Let me see. That was Sunday night. Yes? Yeah, I was down in the cellar under the boat I'm building. And I was in my dark room developing some pictures. This just doesn't make any sense to me. Russians, Martians, what makes you think that? I've seen them. Where? At the end of the tunnel. What tunnel? The one they built under Tyler Town. A tunnel under Tyler Town? Yes, that's right. It's made out of copper or some alloy. Copper? Wait a minute. I found a copper layer under my cellar floor last night. So did I. That's how I discovered it. I found a way to get in, too. It's at the bottom of this excavation. Holy mackerel, Henry. Why don't we tell the police? Because we can't trust them. Even the police may be Martians in disguise. Oh, come on now. You're being melodramatic. Oh, am I? Well, you just come with me. Where? Into the tunnel. I'll show you. Henry Swanson led Guy Burkhart to a small hole in the side of the excavation. There, he removed <coughs> a cut-out piece of metallic substance, and they crawled into a dimly lit tunnel. They walked for what seemed like two miles until Swanson held his finger to his lips. We've got to be quiet now. Henry, this is fantastic. They've got a tunnel right into the whole town. Oh, you haven't seen anything yet. There's a room a little farther down. We'll be able to look through a glass in the door. Is it safe? It's perfectly safe, unless one of them comes along. Well, come on. Okay. Here. Now, Burkhart, look through this glass. Now, just so I know I'm not completely insane, tell me what you see. Good lord. Well? A tremendous panel with dozens of telescreens in front of each. A servo robot. They seem to be computing something. Yes, I've watched them. They're evaluating data from the screens. Evaluating? Why not? Each of them has each of them has a part of the human mind, remember? It's against the law to transfer evaluating circuits from a human brain to a robot. Burkhart, whoever is conducting <coughs> this monstrous experiment is operati operating far outside the law. Have you gotten a chance to look at the data on those screens? No, I've been afraid to go in. They might be... There might be warning circuits somewhere. If I knew what those ro robots were working on, we could get into... We could go to the authority. I'll risk it if you will. All right. It's worth a sh chance. We were lost anyway. Okay, open the door. So far, so good. Come on, let's take a look at that data. But don't interfere with the robots. Don't worry. Here, let's look at this screen. Listen to this. Test in the 47K12. 
group with certain breath mints pulled 80% using a soft female approach. The indications approach indicates that there are extensions of this approach would influence at least 70% nationwide. The district of elevation pitch pulled only 10%. The direct elevator pitch pulled only 10%. This should be abandoned in a new series of high persuasion personal elements include Henry. Do you know what this means? No, I haven't the faintest idea. Well, I don't blame you. This is crazy, but it fits the fact. When I think about it, do you know who's behind this? Martians? No, not Martians. Henry. Humans. What? Humans are in interested in developing the perfect propaganda machine. What? I don't know who they are or how they've done it, but somehow they've taken Talatine over. Hypnosis? Hypnosis, drugs, maybe some kind of rares maybe. However they do it, what happens is they let us live through a single day. During that day, they pour all kinds of suggestions and propagandas into us. At the end of the day, they evaluate the results, see how we reacted, then at midnight, they wash it out of our minds, and the next morning, we start the same day over again with different stimuli. No, I, I can't believe that. I know it sounds ridiculous, but think of it. They can run the perfect test and on the whole community. Do you know what that means, Henry? Suppose one man learned how to influence people. 100%. Why? In a year. He could sell us anything from freezers to potential candidates. Oh, wait a minute. We're guinea pigs, Henry. This whole community is one big test tube for Dorchin's propaganda research. Burkhart, what do we do? I don't know, but somehow we got to get out of this town and get to the FBI. Do you think we can? It's worth a try. Come on. Wait. What is it? Look through the door. Somebody's coming down the tunnel. I got to hide. Behind the circuit box. Shh. Good lord. It's Dorchin, the head of the research institute. Shh. Quiet. All right, Burkhart. Come out. We know you're in this room. Miss Horton has informed us that you remember. I must warn you that it is useless to buck <coughs> us. Come out peacefully or let our maintenance, maintenance crew adjust you properly so you don't remember from one experiment to the next. It'll be quite painless if you don't come out peacefully. We'll, we'll have to get you. Henry, take this branch and I give you the word, jump him. But he may be armed. Well, we've got nothing to lose. Very well. I'm coming after you. Now! Burkhart, I've killed him! No, wait. Get under his coat unbuttoned. Maybe his heart's still beating? Henry! What is it? What's wrong? Look underneath his coat. Heaven helps us. Heaven help us. It's a robot. Humanoid robot. Designed to look like Georgian. Come on, let's get out of here. Wait. What's that? The loudspeaker. I've told you I've told it was you useless, you useless, gentlemen. Useless. Who are you? Mr. Dorchin Naturally. Mr. Dorchin. What are you trying to do to us? Merely trying to prevent you from damaging my experiment. Somebody, the FBI or somebody, is going to get wind of this madness. Really, Burkhart? You're quite naive. Now, why not be reasonable and let and let the maintenance crew adjust you? And if I refuse, I suppose you'll kill me. That would be quite impossible. Oh? You see, Burkhart, you're really dead. Dead? You're shocked, it's quite true. You and everyone else in this town were killed by a premature atomic blast at the Control Chemical Plant. The blast, the blast occurred at 7 a.m. on June 15th. That is last thing imprinted in your minds. That's why you wake up screaming each morning. No, it isn't true. But it is. What I, what I and my associates did was take the brain circuits from your dead bodies. We stored them in electrochemical batteries till we had a, a chance to rebuild the, the cities and begin our tasks. Do you think I believe a fantastic tale like that? I imagine you find it incredible. Of course, we didn't rebuild everything exactly. After all, it only has to last for a single day, June 15th at midnight. We turn off the power and wash out the memory from of the day. And your friend Swanson unfortunately has defective circuits. You remember? Burkhart, it's no use. We're trapped. Give up. No, not me. What can we do? We can make a run for it. Down the tunnel. Come on. It's useless, Burkhart. Keep going. It's useless. 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 It's not use. You go ahead. You go ahead. No. 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 No.
Yes, it's open. Whew. Oh no. I don't believe it. Swanson. They were standing on a ledge of smooth, finished metal. At their feet, the ledge dropped away into a chasm so deep they could, they could not see the bottom. Behind was only a glare so bright that they were their, that their eyes could not stand to look into. And yet, just a li a limit of their vision, something so huge it was almost incredible. Something. Burkhart. Yes. This is Dorton. Now, do you understand why it's useless? The great looming figure moved closer. It seemed to take shape now, and yet it was so gigantic as to be unbelievable. It came closer. The glare was partially blocked, and then Guy Burkhart knew that the towering shape was none other than Dorchin himself. You see how I did it, Burkhart? I took your brain circuits and then reduced so they could be transferred into a tiny humanoid mannequins. That's why you are, that's why you are, Burkhart. A tiny miniature, miniature of yourself in this city is the whole experiment I'm conducting. It's built on your tabletop. It was the morning of June 15th, and Guy Burkhart woke up screaming. You have just heard X minus one. Presented by the National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with the Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, Galaxy Magazine, on your newsstand today. Tonight, a transcription, X-1, has brought you the tunnel under the world. That's our story from X-1. Tune in next week to WRKC and see what adventures await. In the meantime, let's hear a word from our sponsor. The Flash is the flash dash, dash, but not, not enough, enough to, to crash. crash. Yellow with black stripes, red rims, and can reach 60 miles per hour in 5 seconds. It's the new Flash Turbocharged V8 from Mercury. The new Flash is available now for $12,000 at your local Any More dealership. If you want to dash, you want to cash, cash, cash to buy, buy the new Flash. Wife up, it's my good friend Lou Costello. Hey, Abbott. Do me a favor, loan me 50 I can't, bud, I can't, I can't loan you $50. Oh, yes, you can. No, I can't. All I got is 40 All right, then give me the 40 and you'll owe me 10 Okay, I'll owe you 10 That's right. How come I owe you 10 How much did I ask for? 50 How much did you give me? 40 So you owe me 10 That's right, but you owe me 40 Don't change the subject. I'm not changing the subject. You're trying to change my finances. Come on, Abbott, give me my $40. All right, here, there's your 40 Now give me the 10 you owe me. I'm paying you on account. On account? On account, I don't know how I owe it to you. That's the way you feel about it? That's the last time I asked you for a loan of $50. But how can I owe you $50? Now, all I got now is 30 well, give me the 30 you owe me. Well, give me the 30 and you'll owe me 20. Okay, this is getting worse all the time. First I owe him 10, now I owe him 20. Well, why do you run yourself into debt? I'm not running in. You're pushing me. I can't help if you can't handle your finances. I do all right with my money. And you do all right with my money, too. Now I asked you for a loan of $50. You gave me 30, so you owe me 20. 20 and 30 is 50. No, no, no. 25 and 25 is 50. All right. Here's your 30. Now give me the 20 you owe me. Fine guy, I won't loan a pal, won't loan a pal 50. How can I loan you $50? All I got now is 10. Wait a minute. To show that I'm your pal, want to double that? Go ahead. See you later. Wait a minute. I don't want that kind of money on the up and up. Pick a number between 1 and 10. Okay. Is it even or odd? Even. Is the number between 1 and 3? No. Between 3 and 5? No. I think I got him. Between 5 and 7? Yes. Number 6? Right. How did he do that? Hey. With the money I borrow, I'm buying a suit for my new job. What are you doing? I got a job at a bakery. Good. What are you doing there? Loafing. Loafing? Loafing. Where? In a bakery. You working? Well, certainly. Doing what? Loafing. 
That's what I was doing here. I was taking it easy. No, no, no. Not that kind of living. You're just a lazy idiot. I was taking it easy, same as you. I work when I loaf. How can you work and loaf at the same time? Why not? Can they do that? That's what they pay me for. They pay you for what? To loaf. How do they pay you to loaf? I work for the baker. I'm loafing there. You loaf. You don't do a thing. How much do they pay you at the baker store? A dollar and a half an hour. For loafing. I'm a union man. I belong to the union. I'm loafing here and I don't get nothing for it. You're not supposed to get money for that kind of loafing. Can I loaf there with you? I should say not. You've got to join the union. i got to join a union of loafers? You can't loaf without belonging to the union. Well, what do you think of that? You mean i got to join a union in order to loaf? Well, certainly. Don't say nothing, but I was loafing here without the union knowing. No, you weren't loafing here. You can't loaf here. You can't loaf here. You've got no dough. I got no dough. That's why I'm loafing, because I don't got no dough. No, no. You got dough, you could loaf. Then you'd have to get a card and join the union. You mean I gotta have dough in order to loaf? Well, sure. How can you loaf without dough? No, no. You got dough, you could loaf. Then you'd have to get a card and join the union. You mean I gotta join... I have dough in order to loaf? Well, sir, sure. How can you loaf without dough? That's very hard. I've been trying to do it. You can't do anything. I can't retire now. I've got to have a job. Someday, come down to the bakery. I'll show you how to loaf. In fact, you know, I've never told you this, but my whole family were loafers. No kidding. Sure, my father was a bigger loafer than me. He was? Yeah, he was one of the best loafers in the family. I think you're a better loafer than your father. I know that now because he taught me how to loaf. You know you're a bigger loafer than your father? Oh, sure, sure. You're a bigger loafer than me, too, ain't ya? You're no loafer. I'm not? Certainly not. What? You're just a lazy, no good for nothing, whatever you are. How could I be lazy? You just told me I'm no loafer. You're a loafer, not me. But I get paid for loafing. You don't. That's what I don't understand. Work in a bakery store, get paid a dollar and a half an hour for loafing. That's right. This I don't understand. What do you mean you don't understand? What's to understand? I don't understand you working and loafing and getting paid for it. Wait a minute. Can I get a job there doing the same thing? No. I can't get a job there. You have to belong to the union. All you do is talk, 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 and all I hear, you don't say nothing. Loafing. I don't say anything? No. Look, you go to the union, you get a card, you go to the baker, they give you dough. You need the dough first. I need the dough, and how I need the dough? You need the dough in order to loaf. I need the dough in order to loaf? That's right. You can't get any dough. All right, let's just eat lunch. There goes two inseparable friends. I would like to take this time to thank our good friends at... Chocolate Bears, Chocolate Bears, you can eat them anywhere. Eat them here, eat them there. Chocolate Bears, Chocolate Bears. And... It's the dash, 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 to buy the, the new flash. <laughs> Their contributions help us bring you the show. Wait, there's late breaking news from the field. Hello, we're back with an urgent weather update. Unexpectedly, the sun came out. Stay inside of your house because the flood is still high and the workers are working on unclogging the pipe so you guys will be able to come outside. That's it for the weather report. Talk to you all next time. And there you have it, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our broadcast for this evening. Tune in next time for WRKC Variety Show at this channel. Have a lovely evening and good night.